All right, what we're going to show you here is uh, another way to check the installation of your camshaft. Let's say you don't have a degree wheel available, or maybe you're doing a swap inside of the car and you don't have enough room to install a degree wheel on the front of the engine. Uh, here's a quick uh, and easy way uh, that you can use to check the installation of your cam without using the degree wheel. Uh, what you're going to need is uh, a dial indicator. Uh, if you can get two, one for checking the top dead center of the piston and one for checking the lift at the cam load, uh, two would be ideal, uh, but one would suffice. <clears throat> if the engine is out of the car like this, um, what we use is a what we call a deck bridge, uh, which bridges the bore of the piston. Uh, and we can just turn the engine over until the piston hits top dead center. And we know that it hits top dead center because the dial indicator stops as soon as it hits top dead. Now there's a little bit of a debate going on um, as far as finding true top dead center because the piston does dwell at the top uh, depending on your rod length, etc. What we use here at Prestige is what we call the stop method. So we bring the piston up until it just stops moving the indicator. And the reason why we use that method is if you have more than one engine assembler, you need a method that's going to be consistent across all of the assemblers. So if we use the method that we consider top dead center, as soon as the indicator stops, uh, everybody can be consistent and we can get some consistent uh, degree readings for our camshafts. Once you've found top dead center of the number one piston, uh, you want to make sure that you're on the end of the exhaust stroke and just beginning the intake stroke. So if we were to turn the engine anymore, the piston would start coming down in its bore on the intake stroke. So we found that. <clears throat> so um, the next procedure we want to do is to go ahead and figure out how much lift is on the intake load at top dead center. Now in order to measure the amount of lift at top dead center, you'll take your indicator and place it on the intake lifter. Now obviously if this is in the car and the heads are installed, uh, we would take a valve spring off and use the valve to find the top dead center of the piston. Uh, make sure you don't drop the valve inside of the engine, uh, but just let the valve rest on top of the piston. Uh, put your indicator on the tip of the valve and Turn the engine over until the indicator just stops moving. That would be top dead center. <clears throat> and then, of course, to measure the lift on the lifter, you'll want to use the end of the push rod uh, to reach down to actually compact the lifter. Uh, make sure you're not using the rocker arm because the rocker ratio will affect uh, the amount of lift that you're seeing at the cam move. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my indicator here on the intake lifter. And I'm going to zero that out when it's at top dead center. Alright, once I have my indicator zeroed, I'm going to go ahead and turn the engine counterclockwise. And that's going to tell me how far the lifter is off of the base circle. I'm going to go ahead and turn this engine backwards and watch my indicator until my needle stops moving. And you can see I went about 115 thousandths. So at top dead center, and the piston is at top dead center of the intake stroke, our intake load was at 115 thousandths lift. Knowing that information will allow me to look up the cam load specifications from the manufacturer. Uh, in, in our case, uh, all, our, all of our cams are custom ground by comp cams. So we're actually going to go look at the load number and find what the center line is that corresponds to 115 thousandths of lift at top dead center. Here's a picture of the cam card that we got with our custom ground camshaft from Comp. You can see on this particular card it does list the grind number for each the intake and the exhaust load. Uh, if the cam card that you have does not have the grind number you may need to call Comp's tech line to get the grind number before looking it up in their master catalog. But since we have ours, um, we're going to go ahead and go to 
comps website and from their home page you can click on the information tab and go to the online catalogs and scroll down to the cam Loeb master catalog this is going to list all of the cam Loeb profiles that comp offers um, if you know the family of camshafts that the Loeb is in you can look it up through the table of contents or you can scroll all the way to the back of the document for an index that lists the Loeb numbers in numerical order I'm just gonna go ahead and use the find feature in my browser and you can see uh, just type in the grind number and it pulls it up quite quickly you can see that this particular lobe um, if we scroll over to the tap it lift at top dead center you can see that they list a 106 degree and 110 degree number and what these are are the intake center lines so at 106 degrees of intake center line we should have 115 thousandths of lift at top dead center and that's exactly what we found on our example uh, when we brought the piston to top dead center and measured the amount of tappet lift on the intake lobe we had exactly 115 thousandths so we know that that camshaft is installed at 106 degrees of intake center line. Now you may be asking the question what if the amount of lift that you find at top dead center falls outside of these two numbers? And that's a very good question. So what we'll need to do is a little bit of math. And the great thing about Comp Camp's catalog is that they actually give us the amount of lift for two different intake center lines. So what that allows us to do is to calculate how many thousandths of lift equal approximately one degree uh, of change in the intake center line. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and open up my calculator here. Uh, and we can see that between these two center lines, there's four degrees. And on our lobe number, there's a difference of 16 thousandths of lift. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 16 thousandths of lift and I'm going to divide that by 4 and it's going to come up with approximately 4 thousandths of lift per degree. Now let me show you an, a, another example um, kind of an extreme example. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull up a uh, pro stock camshaft profile Alright, so here we are under the uh, XK Pro Stock drag roller. And this low profile uh, again shows us 106 degree center line and 110. But you can see there's quite a bit of difference between these two numbers. So let's go ahead and figure out how much difference there is. Uh, so 249 thousandths uh, take away 228 thousandths gives us a difference of 21 thousandths of lift in 4 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and divide that by 4 and we come up with just over 5 thousandths of lift per degree. So depending on what we figure out our um, acceleration rate or the amount of lift per degree, uh, we could use that to calculate uh, our intake center line. So let's say that if we were doing this cam profile and we actually came up with 239 thousandths of lift, okay, uh, that would be a difference of 10 thousandths of tappet lift and we've already figured out that approximately 5 thousandths equals 1 degree. So we are 2 degrees away from the 106 degree center line and because we have less lift, that means that the camshaft is retarded and two degrees retarded from 106 would be 108 degree center line. So hopefully that just gives you an idea of how you can figure out the intake center line of your camshaft without using a degree wheel by simply measuring the amount of tappet lift at top dead center. More tech tips, dyno results, information on new product testing, and vehicle project coverage, sign up for our weekly newsletter at prestigemoto.com.